Hello. I think we are live. Just making sure everything's running well. And so we'll let the system kind of boot up here and let people jump on if they want to catch this video live today. We will be talking about the personality traits that could be keeping you sick or in pain. And so this is one of the things that was really frustrating to me is that I didn't realize that I was doing this to myself um, when I was starting to really get pain or feel down or feel a lot of symptoms of pain, of depression, anxiety. Um, I didn't realize I was actually, I had personality traits that were keeping me unwell. So in a few minutes, I will share with you some of those personality traits that could be keeping you sick or that you might recognize in yourself. Um, so maybe brainstorm, please share where you're from. If you're joining us live today, please throw it in the comments as to where you're coming from, which part of the country, which part of the world, love to know and maybe start thinking about some of the personality traits that could be keeping you sick. And we will go through that in a couple minutes. And so what I've done with learning about this is I've put together the Yoga Therapy for Healing uh, Chronic Pain Program. And so if you want more information on that, I've, I've dropped a link in the comments below. So you can go ahead there and look. I'm just going to put something else in the comments to invite others here. So just bear with me, please do share where you're coming from. And we will get started shortly. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I have suffered from chronic pain. Um, for many years I suffered from chronic pain, um, struggling to try to figure out, because I'm one of those people that just wants to figure out what do I need to do to get over this. Hi Ange, thanks for sharing from Fort St. John, welcome. Your name's Ange as well, lovely name. Um, so what I found was that I tried everything. I kept reaching outside of myself. I kept looking to somebody. I kept talking about it all the time because I was in pain and I wanted answers. And so I, I would drive my friends crazy. I would drive my family crazy. I, I, they would just get to the point where they didn't want to hear it anymore. Um, and then that made me feel lost, kind of lost and alone. Um, like there's nobody that really cared to hear or help me support me with overcoming chronic pain. Um, so what I found is I ended up in a place where I just had to figure it out on my own. I had to turn inward. And the one thing I noticed, because I've always been, you know, into fitness, I used to go to spin classes, I used to go to, you know, do some jogging, I used to do yoga, I used to do lots of different things. And I found that I was just in more pain no matter what I did, except once I slowed down my yoga practice, and I allowed it to become more about my breath, not reaching or attaining or trying to reach a goal or get into a shape or push harder. That was the key. That was the point where I realized it was helping me. So what we've learned with chronic pain is that we cannot allow the body to stay in stress. It's the body's already stuck in stress. So even good stress could be affecting you in a negative way. And so a lot of us think, okay, we'll just go to the gym or you'll go and you'll start lifting weights or you'll, um, you know, put the body through stress. You'll go through these anti-inflammatory diets or whatever it might be out there that you're thinking is going to help you, but it's actually causing your body more stress. So one of the things that I learned was that my personality was to push. My personality was to put myself through hell if I had to, just to try to achieve something. 
And because I was that type of a person, I was actually keeping myself in more pain. So the key here is to understand yourself, understand why, why was I pushing? Why did I feel like I needed to be so hard on myself and not just physically. So a lot of the times, you know, in my life, I've noticed over many, many years, I have struggled with being really hard on myself mentally as well. So always putting myself down, always um, taking what other people thought and turning that into a weapon against myself in my own mind. And it takes a lot of years of practice. It takes a lot of perseverance to continue to retrain my mind, retrain those thought processes to support myself, to be kind to myself, to be compassionate to myself. And that's the same within the practice. So this is why yoga therapy, therapeutic yoga for chronic pain specifically is the answer or was the answer for me. Okay, so I, like I said, I spent many years, I went to doctors, I did the surgeries, I did the medications, I did the other therapies, um, constantly reaching out my, outside of myself, I changed my diet, and it still wasn't getting me to where I needed to be. And that's because I wasn't also turning inward, trusting myself, being compassionate and kind and accepting of who I am and my journey and where I am and treating myself with absolute love, compassion, as if I was holding myself as if I was holding a precious new little baby or a precious new little puppy, right? Like I, that is the practice is to learn how to really support yourself and listen and know what your intuition is saying. So are there any other thoughts out there? Do you guys have any other thoughts about other personality traits that could be keeping you sick or could be keeping anyone sick for that matter? So one for sure is I was trusting everyone outside of myself for answers. I was looking to them for answers. I was depending on them to give me answers when really the whole time the answer was inside me. And so that's a really tough one to kind of wrap your head around, but that is the practice. That's the beauty of yoga therapy. It gives you this container, carves out this time and space in your life where you can go and you can explore in a safe, comfortable way, full of compassion, full of love, full of support um, and acceptance, right? So any other thoughts? Thanks for sharing. Sounds just like you. Yes, exactly. Hi, Mia. Thank you for saying hello. Um, oh, it is Mia. You're, oh, you're in Fort St. John. Hi, Mia. Nice to see you. Um, yeah, so what else, what else would be another personality trait that could be keeping us sick, keeping us really in pain? So not trusting ourselves, trusting outside of ourselves. And then also a lot of us have been given these belief systems throughout our lives, right? So you're raised into the world, you kind of, the stuff is put on you or put in front of you, um, to take on as a belief, right? So whatever that could be, it could be uh, societal beliefs, it could be religious beliefs, it could be family beliefs, it could be whatever is offered and then you choose, okay, I'm taking that on as my own belief. And so it's time in the practice, in the yoga therapy practice and in the program that I developed, we spend time on figuring that out, right? thinking I have to be away because I was raised that way. Exactly. Family, old patterns. Exactly. That's so, so right. So we have to question those. We have to look at those a little bit and say, is this serving me? Is this actually benefiting me at this point in my life? Do I really believe this? Why have I taken this on? Should I let it go? Is it, is it important maybe just to release this and, and, you know, a lot of times for me in the practice, I've noticed, okay, a lot of those beliefs are from somebody else, right? There's somebody else has given them to me based on their life, based on their experience. And so 
now the work for me is to figure out if that is true for me, if I want to hold on to it, or if I want to let it go. So this is the hard work. This is the work that takes time. Another personality trait of people who remain sick is they are looking for a quick fix. And I know that can be hard to hear sometimes, but we're just, we're human, right? We want this right now, right? We, you know, with all of the, the things at our fingertips, we want to be able to fix what's wrong with us like immediately. And that's how I felt. That's why I was looking everywhere. I was talking about it all the time. I was driving my friends and family crazy. I was driving myself crazy to figure out how to fix my pain and letting go of that belief, letting go of a quick fix mentality has also allowed me to come into this place of more acceptance, this place of more peace. And my body gets lighter with the practice. You start to let go of some of that tension just by changing that thought process. And it's true with so many different thought processes. So yoga therapy for chronic pain is not a quick fix. It is not going to be like going to the doctor and getting medication to take away the pain. I am so grateful that we have the medical system, that we have doctors in place, that we have surgery options. Um, you know, it's amazing what our medical system has been able to do. And I think it's amazing to have there as a use of support when needed. But that's again, something that we really need to ask ourselves is, is this the right time for me to use that as my needed support? Right? Are there other healthier options? Is there a different direction I could be going that could be keeping me healthier? And so again, it's not to come in into this with judgment or to beat yourself up or to judge anybody else out there. It's simply to check in with yourself, try different things, see what works, let go of the rest. Right, so any other thoughts out there with um, with what could be keeping us sick, personality-wise, personality trait-wise. Like something that just kind of comes to mind for me is um, feeling like lazy, I guess. Like sometimes I get in these lazy moods and I just don't really want to put effort in. And I used to beat myself up about that as well. I used to think, well, I'm doing this to myself. I'm being lazy or I'm, I'm not exercising enough or I'm not eating well enough or whatever. And this thought process keeps going and this negative energy keeps entering my body as I'm thinking this. And so again, now the yoga practice has taught me to be more compassionate to myself. There's days that I'm going to be lazy and that's okay. I have to accept and allow myself to be lazy if that's what my body's wanting to do, if that's what my mind wants to do, let it, right? There's a meditation by Sarah Blondin called You Are Allowed, and it changed my thought process in a huge way when I was initially practicing. And so I have it, I suggest it to um, all my clients that come through, well, not all of them, but definitely in the program that I've built, the Yoga Therapy uh, for Chronic Pain program. Um, she's one of my favorite um, teachers and she can be found on Insight Timer as well as myself. I've got some uh, meditations on Insight Timer. It's a free app that you can get and um, you can search anything on this app. You can find out any different category. If you're struggling with sleep, if you're struggling with pain, if you're struggling with whatever it might be, maybe being hard on yourself, um, I encourage you to go listen to that meditation because it just puts it into perspective. We are here for this short period of time and we are allowed, we are allowed to be imperfect. We are allowed to learn and grow and make mistakes and get better. We're allowed all of the things that it is to be human. So what I will leave you with is that instead of beating yourself up in your mind instead of one of my favorite, my, or sorry, I should say my least favorite words is should. 
instead of the shoulds, I should be doing this, I should be doing that. That word has so much negative connotation. It's like you're not doing what is already right for you. By using the word should, it's like we there's something else that should be there. <laughs> so I encourage you to think about that. Think about, notice your thoughts. Notice how you're speaking about yourself to others, to yourself in your mind. Um, notice what personality traits are supporting you getting better. Um, are you closed off to new ideas? Because if you're closed off to new ideas, this is not for you. I'll tell you that right now because to heal, I truly believe we must be open to, to new ideas, to new options. It doesn't mean you have to take it on for yourself, but it just means you need to have an ability to contemplate or be open to contemplating and considering something different and how that might work. So sorry, here, here's another. Yes, thanks for sharing that, Mia. Awesome. Yes, exactly. Like judgment is the worst thing that we can do for ourselves. It's the worst thing we can do to others. I mean, it's there, it's part of our ego, right? Like we have these thoughts and these judgments and all these things going through the mind um, I remember when I was doing my nutrition certification, one of the main things they told me was that you have 80% or sorry, you have 60,000 thoughts a day and approximately 80% of those are negative. And that's just the human condition, right? So we have these negative thoughts that are constantly running through the mind This in, and it's your ego. So this is what I've learned in yoga is that it's your ego. And so really, who we are like who are you are you those thoughts right no the thoughts are were given to me like i wouldn't be able to have those thoughts unless i'd had some experience with somebody else or somebody giving it to me or something in life so really we are the observer of the thoughts that's the essence of who we really are, that spirit that comes into the world, into the human body that's untouched, unscathed at that point, that spirit that leaves the world and, and moves on to another place and leaves that, sheds that human body, leaves it behind, right? So some things to really contemplate is like, who are you? Who am I? And when we look at it and we see that the thoughts are not who we are, they're not us, they're just there trying to keep us safe, right? Like they're there to protect you. And that's why we judge. That's why we judge ourselves. That's why we judge other people. But we have to kind of like, you know, sift through all of that and figure out what do I actually believe from my thoughts, from the ego? Which ones do I want to take on? Which ones don't I want to take on? So it's this whole new level of awareness that has to come in is to understanding, you know, that we are not our thoughts. We can choose what we want to take on and we have to be present. We have to notice what's there. We have to take time and space to see what's happening right in front of us, in our minds, in our bodies. And that's the beauty of the yoga practice. It gives us that time and space to do so. So thank you for joining me today. I'm going to be doing these lives hopefully every Monday. I'm going to be doing a different kind of hot topic of what, um, what has been coming up from my clients, from people out there in the world, different things that are, are um, coming forward um, into my world that I want to touch on for you guys because I think that it's something that some of... Um, some of you guys are struggling with or you just you're not sure um you know the support is there so again i've got a workshop in the chat in the comments you can sign up for the workshop so we go into a lot more detail in the workshop um about this kind of stuff plus way more and what is involved in really getting to the root cause of um healing or overcoming your chronic pain and if you would like to sign up for a call prior to that, you want to connect with me one on one, you want to share with me what's going on for you specifically, I can help you get, you know, 
through some of those barriers or through some of those obstacles that might be there for you and you might not even know that they're there yet um, but we can do 45 minutes it's a it's a free call that I will connect with you one-on-one -on -one. and um, by the end of the call we'll figure out what your next steps are in overcoming your chronic pain thank you again for joining let me just make sure that I have wrapped up everything here today and um, if I can leave you with just anything in this uh, live or this this moment to take away is just start noticing start noticing what thoughts are coming through what personality traits you might have are they serving you and I would love to hear your your results on that so please jump back into the Facebook group um, or my page and share with me at any time. Thanks again, and we will see you soon. Thanks, Mia. Nice to see you.